what we're going to do is have a wee look, give you a demonstration on how you create uh, a perspective. So what I'll do with you is the one point perspective and then with the other group I'll do the two point perspective. Okay, so if you come back, you know, later on, maybe tomorrow or whatever, and look at my Dundee, you should see the video for the two point perspective. Okay, so the other group, they're, they're kind of slightly disadvantaged and they haven't seen the terminology introduced uh, in the kind of simpler one point perspective. Okay, but as you can see, this is this is the starts off life as the section drawing that you've, you're working on and then the part of the plan that relates to that. Okay, now to, to create the perspective there's there's all sorts of things you need to, to set up. Okay, we've got this picture plane, a station point, so that is really the viewpoint, the viewer's position. Okay, the vanishing point is related to that, it's directly down from it. And we've got a horizon line and you choose the, the, the height of the horizon line. Okay, so some of this stuff is set up, is, is kind of fixed, but other is choosable. So the station point is choosable and the horizon line is choosable as well. And you can see here how, how a higher horizon line shows you more of the floor, a lower horizon we're seeing effectively more of the sky. So if you had a, you know, if you had an interesting roof, then you would be putting your horizon line further down. If you're wanting to stress, you know, the interesting floor patterns or the arrangements, you know, below, then you put the horizon line a bit further up. Okay, so this is important as well. This this splay this is called your field of view. Okay, so you can see here that this there seems to be more perspective and and more distortion on this perspective than there is on this one. This one feels a bit more natural. Okay, we happen to be bang in the center of the the arrangement there, but the field of view is, you know, 22 degrees less than this one. So there is a there is a lot less perspective on this view than there is on this one. It's it's really difficult to, to kind of quantify what the results, you know, kind of judge what the result's going to be until you, you just try to dive in and draw something. But what we'll do is we'll set the we'll set the station further back and down to the left instead. Okay, so we'll do a third one as an example and you can see the see the difference. Okay, but I want to just explain this field of view kind of uh, concept if I can and you know this is effectively a kind of a photographic issue okay so this looks a little bit complicated but what we've got is the viewer okay and they're looking through an object okay now if you imagine that object to be something like a roll of sellotape okay so if you hold a roll of sellotape up to your eye you can you know, there's not much in the way. It's kind of, you've got a pretty big field of view. Okay, if we were stood, say, 50 meters away from this building, okay, then the resultant photograph, if we were, you know, taking a photograph, would look something like this. The building would appear quite small in the photograph because the field of view is very big. Okay, if you compare that to looking through, say, a empty kitchen roll. Okay, so this is much more like looking through a telescope. Okay, and you know, if the building is still the same distance away, your field of view is considerably less. Okay, and what happens then is that the photograph makes the building appear bigger. Okay, in reality, it's it's not. It's, it's still exactly the same position. Your stud is exactly the same distance away. It's just that the the framing of the photograph is much tighter. So, in reality, it makes the object look bigger. Okay, because the photographs, the resultant photographs, is always the same size. Okay, let's just add an object snap on here. Okay, so in the end.
that's what the two photographs look like and you can see that here I've got I found a nice example somebody taking a photograph of this mosque or observatory I'm not sure what it is um, with a telephoto view sorry with a wide angle view and with a telephoto view okay but the person is stood in exactly the same place it's just the tube that they're looking through on their camera is a different shape okay and that's how we you know with larger DSLR cameras you basically have a bag with you with different lenses in for different purposes so if you're wanting to do a landscape or you're wanting to photograph you know a, a full interior of a building or inside a cathedral or something big you know a big object like a big ocean liner or something like that you need a lens like this to capture more in the scene so you can see the numbers on here 17 to 40 this, this is 17 millimeters to 40 millimeters okay and what it means is it's this is the 17 millimeters okay so there to there is the 17 so it's the the the, the, the kind of depth of the tube that the lenses are in okay on this one I flipped the photograph but the the text on here says 400 and 200 so this is able to actually kind of extend between those two effective kind of lens lengths so at 400 millimeters it's you know it's a, a mighty zoom in it's really focusing on the objects but that's what field of view is all about okay and what you tend to find is that if you're using a telephoto view you don't get much perspective it basically flattens the picture if you're using a wide angle lens and you're close up to an object you get a lot of distortion okay you tend to see the most more distortion at the kind of edges of the view this is where it starts to look more distorted in the middle it looks fairly flat but near the edges you see a lot more distortion Okay, but a decent camera, you know, is something, you know, worth investing in. Um, Canon or Nikon are the two kind of main ones. Um, it's quite a big decision. You you do have to kind of, if you're going to go down that route, you do have to kind of choose. Uh, Sony make excellent cameras as well, and I shouldn't I shouldn't leave them out. Uh, but what you do is once you've made that choice, you're you're going to then start collecting lenses based on that camera company that you've gone with so if you're buying a Canon then you generally will buy Canon lenses or lenses from like a company like Sigma that that will fit a Canon camera okay you can't buy a Canon lens and expect to use it on a Nikon body it doesn't work that way so it's quite a big decision um, you know but there's millions of cameras on eBay so you know if it's your first DSLR camera don't buy a new one you know just shop around on, on eBay there's thousands of them thousands of lenses as well um, you know the professional stuff you know costs a fortune I'm not I'm not in that bracket at all you know the, the, the cameras that you might see around the football ground these the lens alone can be about five thousand pounds so they're uh, they're big bucks but they're, those are special lenses so so that they can capture the movement of the footballers or the sportsman and have decent lighting as well and it all be in focus and that's why they spend so much money on those lenses and all these paparazzi as well they use those kind of lenses because they only get in a few seconds to grab that annoying photograph of the celebrity okay but anyway we're here to have a look we'll go at the perspective so what I'll do is I'll just I'll move this one to the side okay and I can bring it back uh, I'll, I'll just actually put a little circle on the end there so I know where to to bring it back to and I'm just gonna move this one away out of harm's way okay let's put you over there put you on the end as well so we've got a clear kind of working space 
Okay, and what I said is that we'll we'll go a bit further down than this. So let's just mark a bring a line across to want to be further down and further to this side. So let's copy our station point. Okay, and let's go let's go down here. Okay, and what I'll need to do because I brought all this down, I'll need to I will need to move these down as well. So I've got a bit of space to work in. Okay, so let's go down to here. Okay, now I've got a layer for projections just so we can see them clearly on the on screen. Okay, now my vanishing point where the lines converge, that wants to be straight down from the station point. Okay. So it doesn't have to be at the intersection of the two. Okay. So let's say we want to see a more more sky than this one. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put the vanishing point below the horizon line. So I'm going to copy the vanishing point from its center. Okay, and I'm going to put it just below the horizon line. Okay. That's okay. The horizon line was uh, that was higher on that one, wasn't it? Yep. Okay, so what we'll do is we need to firstly kind of map out the kind of extents of the of the of the object. So they they're kind of working in a in a similar way to the to the elevation. We kind of work from the front to the back. Okay, so what we've got is the extents of the plinth. So what we'll do is draw a line projection from the corner of the plinth there to the station point over to this line. Okay, now because these are all touching the picture plane, these these shapes have no no modification. They will be exactly the same as the section. Okay, so we're basically, you know, there is no shift in the in the size. It's it's basically a kind of a reproduction of the section at the very front. Okay, so this gap, you know, should be the same as the section. So let's cut corners a little bit. Let's just copy the section. Okay, from the corner of the plinth. Okay. And just bring it across so we've got a good head start. Okay, so we don't need these lines. As you go, when you're doing this in CAD, it's much easier. So you, you don't have hundreds of pencil lines that you can get confused with. Okay, let's get rid of this white line as well. That one's a bit messy. Okay, now what we want to do is kind of go back to the to the back of the wall here. So we take a line from the corner to the station point and I'll go to this corner. Okay, but things are a bit different now. What we're looking for is where the projection line crosses the picture plane. So we bring a line down from that intersection. So I'm just going to add intersection here and node as well. So we bring a line down from there. Okay and a line from this position as well. Okay, now what I want to do is bring the lines from the corners of these to the vanishing point. So we go from top of wall to the vanishing point, okay, to the top of this wall. Okay, and then you've, you're creating an intersection here. So these are the these are the key positions. Okay, and the way it works, these should be exactly in line with each other. So if I draw from the center there, it should go exactly to the center there. Okay, and then what we do is we tidy up as we go. So if we trim, 
that line and trim that one you can start to see you know the perspective shape kind of forming already okay we need some of this line for the back corner so we'll just chop off the top part okay we don't need this green line anymore so that keeps things tidy as well circles aren't needed they were just for me to show you why things go okay now what we can do is bring a line from this corner to the vanishing point to this corner okay and once again we should have these lines the ends of these should touch exactly it's absolutely exact okay then a bit of tidying up and that's our main shape so you can see that putting the vanishing point below the horizon line we're seeing kind of more of the sky more of the sky than we did on this one and on this one it's giving us a, a bit higher view Okay, what about the water level? Let's let's plot the water level on here. Okay, so we've got the water level here, this yellow line. You bring this across till you hit the wall. So I'm using the perpendicular object snap. Okay. It would also hit the wall at this side. So let's take across, take it across to here. And then we come back to the vanishing point. Okay, this line's done its well we'll keep that because it's the water we're cutting through the water at that point but what we want is to go from that intersection across to this one and then trim again okay that line's done its job so that there is the water surface let's just change its color so we can kind of see it and it'd be a bit clearer then. Let's just give it a different colour temporarily. Let's just go for something a bit aquatic. A bit brighter. Let's go there. Okay, the marble panels, they don't go right to the bottom of the pool. Okay, so they stop just in line with the top of the the, the plinth. So again, you know, it's just kind of repeating the same processes. You just do it one item at a time and it makes it much easier. You don't kind of lose your way. From intersection across to intersection. Trim off. Trim off. And this line wouldn't be there. Neither would this. Okay, the divisions in the panels with multiple divisions here, that's what these node points are showing. Where if we were looking straight down, that's where the the, the, the joint would be between the marble panels. So we'll get rid of these two and we'll do lots of projections now to pick up these node points. Okay, and then we've got lots of lines to bring down. Now, I don't have to bring them all the way down. As long as I, if I bring them roughly the same amount. And then delete these. And it's just these lines that we need further down. So I'm gonna move them instead. Okay, and then we trim them off. So this is the bottom of the marble. So we trim off these new lines. And trim off the tops. So. 
Okay, so they're a single panel, but actually they're divided into three. So if we bring these across, okay, we'll take it to the other side as well. Well, you can it can kind of project around if we wanted to, but um, let's just let's just take them across just now. And then we go back to the vanishing point. Okay, these these lines have done their job. They go in the bin. But then we can join across here and they should meet exactly and be horizontal. This is a little bit close to our horizon line. just gone on to that junction by accident there we go and then a little bit of trimming to get rid of the lines going to the vanishing point okay we don't need that let's just hide the the horizon line just for now just so we get a little less clutter on the on the image um, we do have if this was a, a kind of a model we would actually have a line outside as well so there would be a little bit of ground here you might have a person standing there in your image so you're just kind of implying that the ground there kind of goes off in the distance okay now the trickier bit is the plinth for the for the statue to stand on okay because in plan view that is kind of just sitting in the middle of the floor. Okay, so you can see it here. I've drawn this little diamond on the top of it to indicate where the person would be stood. Okay, but to establish this position in the perspective, what you have to do is relate it to another object. So what we do is take a line back to this wall. Okay, we need to, we can't just kind of find that space in, in in midair, we've got to kind of take a line back to help us establish that. So this is quite fine detail. Okay, now we're pretty in line with that object, which is it's okay, but it's just a bit trickier. So if we go from the station point to here, okay, and from the station point to this point. Okay, so that gives us two positions to work with. So this is where the block would touch the wall if it was that size, if it went to the wall. So we'll get rid of these because they're all very close to each other. Okay, let's move these two down now. Okay, so these two lines are where the block hits the back wall. Okay, the, uh, we need to plot a point from here. Now this is a trickier bone actually. Yeah, I think we're... Yeah, we need to go... The height... Oops, uh, da -da -da -da, the height is there. So I'm just kind of trying to think which way the line's going to go. It is going to kind of come towards us slightly. Yeah, that's right. So we need to go kind of create a very tight little grid in this area. I'm hoping this is going to work. This is a wee bit tricky because we're, we're right in line with the object. Now, I think we'll get rid of these two because they'll make things a little bit tricky to, to see. Okay, and let's see what... So we've got this little kind of perspective going on here. Okay, so our object's going to get a little bit bigger because it's a bit closer to us. So these lines should extend a little. So we now need to project 
from the actual box, from the corners of the actual box. Got one there. See, they're very, very nearly in line with each other. So it's handy that you can kind of do this with CAD because it, with pencil, you just lose the detail with the thickness of a pencil. So let's let's take these two. Okay, right. So the inside ones are the further away positions. Okay, so we've got four lines to bring down, but the inside ones are further away. So we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, so four vertical lines all very close to each other. But anyway, this is quite a good example because it, it you will run into these little tricky, tricky bits. So I'll bring those down and place them here. Okay, and what we'll do now is extend these. And this should be the front of the, the plinth. We'll go from there to there, and from there to there. Okay, we wouldn't see that line. That's these. These are all kind of hidden inside the plinth. Um, I'm going to keep them as hidden lines, though. So we need another line across here and another line across here. Okay, now we can chop away these going in the way. So, can you see that there's there is it's a there's a cube kind of shape there, but it's it's very, it appears very flat because we're we're basically kind of facing it. Can you see that in your mind's eye? This is the front of the cube, and this is the back of the cube. Okay, what we could do there is make those hidden lines. Because they are kind of obscured by the front of the cube. It worked, okay, so that you can see there that there's space around the back, you know, if there was a fish in here, it could kind of swim around the back of the cube. I'm not going to kind of try and indicate the water level on there as well. I have on the other ones, actually. I have indicated the water level. You can see here where it's a bit easier to see. This is so kind of straight on that it's tricky. Okay, but it's it's you know, very honest. Uh, this bit of line would be hidden, so you know, if you want to make it a bit more kind of diagrammatic, we could hide bits of lines. So I'm using the break command and then the extend command and then we can make those broken lines again. So that's that stuff is hidden behind that cube. Okay, the last thing to do is to get the person on and the statue is basically stood on the middle of the top of the block. So if I draw a line diagonally and then mark the middle, that's where the statue needs to, to go, on the middle of the top. Okay, let's copy the shape. Haven't got a 3D shape, we've just got this 2D one, but it's good enough. Okay, so we'll put it onto the statue, sorry, put it onto the plinth, but we do need to work out the height of the, the person, of the, the statue. Okay, so we'll bring a line, let's bring a line from the top of the hand there, across to the wall, so these are the objects that are touching the picture plane. Okay, we go 
down to the vanishing point okay and we go along the back wall so we're kind of taking this height around the room okay so we go along the back wall okay I don't need that line anymore and I don't need this one okay what I do need though is where the height would be if the statue was at the back wall so we go from here to there then from there to the station point then from where it crosses the picture plane downwards to where we cross this new line okay so that's the height at the back wall not necessarily the height above the block oh, this is so complicated isn't it so vanishing point to that intersection okay a line up from this it's kind of setting out point okay let's get rid of a few lines we don't need that we don't need that and the height of the statue is where these two lines meet up so if I fill it those two together that point there should be the height of the statue for this perspective perspective so what we use there is this reference scale let's just switch this off for a second just because it's hogging the view so we scale these three items the base point the end of this line I don't know what size to use so you click reference we'll go from end point okay to pretty much in line with the top of the hands I'm just gonna pick a point in fresh air here and then when we come down it's getting smaller proportionally and we can take it to the center of that circle and that's the statue set to the correct height as well so a little bit of trimming here because we we're below the water level we we wouldn't see the very base of the statue it would just be just be trimmed off and we could use the statue to trim those lines so that's our third version so all slightly different because they've got different station points let's just put them all in line with each other easier to compare them then let's just get rid of this so you know in once you've kind of done this a few times you're talking about you know maybe a half an hour job to set up a perspective but they're all three different they're all three different viewpoints three different station points with different horizon heights as well um, this one you know a fair bit trickier to be honest because it was in effectively in the water uh, very low down okay but this one I think probably you know is the, the kind of cleanest and that's because it's it's set up you know directly in front of the uh, in front of the plan let's just copy these across and, uh, okay so you can see the different the different angles make a big difference let's just leave this set up so people can have a look at the drawing once it's on my Dundee okay so the angle there because we're further away the angle should be less than 66 if I put a dimension on using the angular setting you can see we're at 50 degrees for this one so our field of view is getting has got sm has got smaller so there's less less distortion on the perspective you can tell that between these two there's a huge amount of distortion here with the 88 degrees very little distortion here on the 51 
Okay, so that's kind of how to set up a, a one point perspective. Um, there is a kind of a worksheet for this if you wanted to kind of have a have a go at one yourself. Uh, there's a worksheet on my Dundee um, in this additional graphics materials. Okay, what I'll do is drop this video and this drawing into here as well. But there is a, a kind of a printable worksheet in here. Okay, and this is the kind of exercise that it's working with. A little bit of description on perspectives. Okay, where is it? He said there's a worksheet. I think it needs to be popped onto there. I will do that in due course. Okay, but this shows you the instructions, and you know this is the kind of kind of chaos that you would have with a hand-drawn one, because all the lines kind of have to stay there. You can't really rub them out halfway through. Um, it just gets kind of very chaotic, uh, and that's a fairly simple kind of shape. But you know, if you work through that little exercise and you know watch the videos that I've put on as well, uh, you know it's a nice quick method. You know, if you're not wanting to go down the 3D modeling route, um, you know you kind of it ends up with a drawing that you don't really get with 3D modeling. It, it, the, the kind of viewpoints look a little bit kind of more more technical in a way and uh, more crafted. I think um, you know just relying on the on the 3D software, um, it, you don't necessarily have to every time. Okay. Let's